This right here is the disturbing reality of what wealthy celebrities can get away with. How, and I repeat, how is Takashi69 still working today? The fact that this is still possible means that some people are severely lacking humanity. Let's go into this. Takashi69 is a gangster rapper. His unique style of rap includes shouting and aggression and uh... And that's about it. Not to mention the fact that he looks like the result of an explosion at the Skittles factory, which has given him a distinctive appearance. He's pretty popular clocking in at a 16.6 subscriber count on YouTube, with his comeback track Goober breaking YouTube's record for biggest 24-hour debut in hip-hop, with the previous record holder being Eminem, and his most recent track Punani amassing 46 million views in just the past three days. Right, let me explain to you why this is fucking disturbing. Takeshi69 only came back in 2020. Why? Because he only just recently got out of his two-year jail sentence. Now, it's pretty commonplace for celebrities and gangster rappers and stuff to be getting into trouble and getting into jail. But is everybody just choosing to ignore what he did to get there? This man that 16 million people are supporting on YouTube. This man that still has music deals. This man who YouTube allows to use this platform went to jail for filming a 13-year-old girl performing oral sex on a grown man. Hey, sorry, I just finished recording when I found out that some of my information was inaccurate. He didn't go to jail for pedophilia that happened in 2015. He actually got off without jail time for that, which is fucking absurd. He actually got jail time for racketeering, weapons, drugs, which only furthers my point, to be honest. They went lenient on him for snitching on other gang members, which is something that Nicki Minaj puts all the focus on. Nicki, you're working with a pedophile. So this video is going very much down the pedophilia angle, so just keep that in mind. And then his dumb pedophilic ass went on to upload the video. Now Takashi69 claims that the girl told him she was 19. But if you can't tell the difference between a 19 year old girl and a 13 year old girl, then I don't think you're safe to be out with the public. Two years is an absurdly short jail sentence for pedophilia. And that bugs me. But what bugs me most is it's not like this was all invisible. It's not like the case went on behind closed doors. It's not like people don't know that Takashi69 is a pedophile. So how is he able to resume his career just like that? How is any music producer willing to shake hands with a convicted pedophile? How is YouTube willing to allow a convicted pedophile to use their platform to make financial gain? And how? Someone tell me just fucking how. Are the general public so willing to continue to support a convicted pedophile? That shit drives me mad. The producers are clearly still working with him for profit. And yes, I am judging. If you are willing to work with a pedophile in order to make money, I really, I, I don't know what to say. And if you're still willing to support a pedophile just because you think his music's kind of good, again, I really just don't know what to tell you. Look, I think we should all be in unanimous agreement here that the most disgusting thing a person can be is a pedophile. It doesn't matter if they've served their jail sentence. It doesn't matter if the victim has chosen to forgive them. In my eyes, and I think in the eyes of many, there is no forgiving a pedophile. Once a pedophile, always a pedophile. Once that line is crossed, you cannot uncross it. It's done. It's a part of your identity now, it's going to follow you. Now, outside of that, I don't want to come off as some out-of-touch guy who hates rap and rap culture. I don't. While it's not necessarily my favorite genre of music, I can appreciate rap and where it comes from when I hear it. And I understand that some people feel they can relate to Takashi69, outside of the pedophilia. I understand what this appeals to. Many people living in kind of impoverished neighborhoods that the powers that be have turned their back on kind of see Takashi69 as a success story that's kind of like one of them. Daniel Hernandez, also known as Takashi69, had his father murdered at a very young age. He himself was poor and impoverished and went on to be a bit of a troublemaker. So to see that little troublemaker from the impoverished neighborhood is someone that people can feel they can relate to. It's like a success story from where you're from. It's like having a successful rapper that represents you. The thing is though, 
Takashi69 does not represent that. That may be where he came from, but that isn't what he represents now. If anything, Takashi69 actually oppresses his own culture by directly attributing gang culture and self-aggrandizement to it. Glorifying him in the face of these accusations makes you just as oppressive to progressive change within impoverished communities. He's a part of a sub-categorized landscape of people that self-affiliate with gang culture with no regard for the lives that they influence. In their quest for materialistic and fiscal acquisition. I don't want to be the kind of person that blames rap music for crime, but there's always going to be an impressionable element to any audience, and no, that is not just rap. I'm not going to be the kind of person that talks like they were born in the 1930s and is afraid of rap music, because that isn't the point I'm trying to make. People like Takashi 69 influence impoverished communities of people to follow through self-destructive behavior on the sole chance that they can rise above that, in the way that Takeshi 69 has. He is a big part of the bigger problem affecting these communities. To support Takeshi69 is to support a message that has ruined the lives of thousands, taken children from mothers, fathers from children. It is time to stop glorifying men like 6 9 But just as importantly, it is time to stop glorifying the message that he perpetuates. I understand that there is a lot of anger. Why should people in poverty honor a law that has failed them? I understand that mindset, but Takashi69 does not represent that. Takashi69 represents the wealthy elite that can get away with anything. In short, Takashi69 today has more in common with a man like Jeffrey Epstein than your neighbors that can't afford to eat every day. Now I know what's gonna happen. If anybody wants watches this video, there's gonna be people in my comment section blasting me for daring to say anything negative about Takashi69, which if anything just proves my point. And there's also gonna be people saying I'm trying to deplatform the guy and that it's cancel culture. I really don't think it is wrong to try and deplatform a person for pedophilia. And I wouldn't be vocal about this were it not for that. I think even without that element, Takashi69 is still not someone people should look up to as an influencer, but I would definitely have more of an agree to disagree kind of attitude. I know that there are some people that will tell me agree to disagree, but when it comes to matters like pedophilia, agree to disagree doesn't really work. And I find that people do need to understand that agree to disagree does not work for everything. The point I'm making is that if you still support Takashi69, knowing what he did and accept his excuses, anytime you ever condemn a pedophile, which you should, it displays a double standard, which you shouldn't have. A pedophile is a pedophile. A principal is a principal. Celebrity, non-celebrity, it doesn't factor in. You should only be as willing to forgive the rich and powerful as you would be the people who live next door. Because they don't need your excuses, nor do they deserve them. I think people definitely need more of an awareness as to what the rich and powerful are getting up to behind closed doors. In this case, everybody knew about it, but if we're so willing to accept it now, what message does that send? What does that tell the rich and powerful that already think they can get away with anything? What kind of message does that send to the impoverished communities that have been told by the media that this rich pedophile represents them? What does this tell their children? We as a collective need to do our best to stop the media from aggrandizing awful people. Stop idolizing the celebrity and be kind to the people who actually live among you. Don't support Takashi69. Support your community and support your friends. Well, now I hand it over to you, fellow home dogs. What do you guys think? And if you did enjoy this video, might I ask you a favor? Please hit subscribe and that notification bell as your way of telling YouTube keep it coming. Likes are also highly appreciated. Now, I'm always trying to make my content better and more consistent, but this does come at a financial cost. And ad revenue isn't always going to cover putting a roof over my head and covering the subscription fees for the software I use to make these videos. So if you really enjoy this content and you feel like lending me a hand by any chance, I would be so grateful if you would consider joining my patron, which will also give you access to the Channel Pup official Discord server. I also have a written blog called Dr. Blogtopus over on channelpup.net. That is where I put my more critical and analytical stuff. And in the description below are links to different social media platforms where you're more than welcome to come and interact with me. So that's it for today, fellow home dogs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on another video.